Well guys, here we are. Uh, this was the uh, Sato 100 that I had the uh, hard time with this um, this prop uh, from uh, not spinning on it. But uh, anyway, we got a fix. My buddy Dean Copeland uh, decided to machine a few things here, which uh, <laughs> I just think it's awesome what he did. Anyway, this is the uh, one that comes with the Whopper. And uh, this unit here, this inside thing, you know, it slides up against that, and then you tighten it up really tight. Then it is pretty loose actually on the shaft. I mean, it's it's got a uh, a collet. No, well, not even a collet. It's a bushing inside there, and uh, but it tends if you don't tighten it all tight, really tight, it tends to spin. Well, I thought I tightened plenty of tight, but anyway. So what he did is he took this part here and he pressed it out. All right, so you press that out, and then he took the original prop thrust, whatever this thing is that's always here, and it's got a cullet inside of it, right? So he took that and machined it down and put the gear around the original one that went on there. <laughs> Pretty cool. So now this is exactly the way it would be in the original form. So this gear is pretty all pretty well what he did is he took this gear and he put it on the thrust uh, uh, spacer on there. Uh, so anyway, so this will work out great. I think this is going to be exactly what I want. That way, Dave, I don't have to take off the back plate when I got to change out the prop and everything else. So as soon as this gets tightened down, this should uh, be blocked down onto the shaft here. Uh, like it uh, would be originally. So uh, I think it's going to work great and um, I'm not going to tighten things down because uh, I'm waiting for my heavy hub. I got a heavy hub of one of these because still when I when I hold it it's it's slightly right now it's slightly it's level and uh, I know Dave you said that yours was level but boy I just would like to get a little more nose weight on there. I mean there's zero hang angle on this auto jar which just doesn't make sense. Um, but it flies I guess but uh, anyway I'd rather do a little nose weight than adding three degrees of down on my swash so that does not make sense. Um, Alright well there it is there's my prop this is the three blader it didn't run pretty good on it until it starts slipping so uh, anyway I'll put that on there when uh, the uh, heavy nut comes in. So, thanks guys. So guys, you know, every time I've done a maiden, I've always done a video of the, uh, the, the mechanics. You know, the PCA2 and all those. So, uh, and the reason I do this is not so much to show off what I have, but it's uh, to make sure I didn't screw up anything. So it's your all's job, Dave. I'm talking about David R. Uh, if uh, if I screwed up anything, you, you got to catch it. So, uh, but anyway, but I wanted to show the cool things first on this thing. Uh, I just I love this machine. It it is a big old. Uh, it's a heavy machine. I mean, it, it's like an old car, and there's a lot of heavy parts. But if it works, it works, and that'd be really cool to see it fly. But uh, first thing is that you know the the real neat thing about this is the pre-rotator, of course, which is right there. You can kind of see everything. You got the servo moving this slider arm, and that engages the cone there. And uh, and that gear is uh, this main gear here is the gear that's going to be up against the. Uh, thrust washer and uh, anyway but it's kind of a neat idea so this spins this is what uh, that article was talking about where it locked up on that brass uh, in that RCM E and E uh, so you gotta lube that a lot so I've been lubing that every time I've been running the engine uh, which is actually only one time <laughs> but uh, but anyway so that's is kind of a neat deal there. Uh, the servo tray they have for you is great. You got these rubber grommets, and uh, you know the servos just lay in there really nice. 
and then they have this big hork and <laughs> servo tray. I, I laugh about it because you know now our receivers are so small it takes one corner of it. And uh, this is a good receiver. This this one I had it in a lot of my sailplanes, and and uh, so I don't have too much fear on that. Uh, it's uh, not. I mean, it's velcroed onto the uh, thing here. I might zip tie it down too, so just in case. But uh, but there you have it. So anyway, um, a lot of stuff going on up here. Like this is a regular little helicopter head. And uh, yes, believe it or not, that angle is what they ask you for. Probably explains why these this ball down here is so large uh, to swing over to this angle here. So, uh, but yes, Mr. Dave, I, I took your uh, settings, your advice, and things are looking pretty good. Uh, let's see, it's tough to tell here, but believe it or not, let's see, that's about, I have this at, I think it's like one degree down, Dave. I've got a little negative on here, and uh, I think I'll be pretty happy with that. But you can kind of see how that is there. Uh, maybe even a half a degree down, but uh, so that looks pretty good to me. What else? Things working good. My right and left, and forward and back. Mechanics inside here. This is kind of neat how they have this coupled. You have this coupled to this arm back here that goes back to the elevator. So, elevator has very little up and down here, but plenty up, up front here. So, I don't think that's going to be a problem. And then my right and left here. Uh, so plenty of plenty of throw I feel on all that so oh I forgot one more thing I forgot my coupling rudder I forgot the you gotta do the rudder part it's the rudder and then the uh, that big horking tail wheel on there so and that rudder is worked by this one rod and uh, doesn't seem like it has any flexing problems. I replaced the original one, like you suggested, Dave, and uh, this is a little thicker one here. So, all right, now I'm done.